Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jason Weintraub, and I just wanted to talk to you about our uh, topic today, transforming broadcast stations. You know, Sony understands now more than ever that the industry is leading to one about consolidation and collaboration, and that's why we're excited to partner with you as we transform the way that broadcast stations have been doing business. This is a graph that I think is really cool. This is where I become an engineering geek. And as we talk about this graphic, I'd like to show you on the bottom the legend first. It's an, uh, where green is essentially conventional on-premise devices and solutions. And the blue is more of what we would now have as cloud-based solutions and what this graphic means to us as broadcasters. If we start with our products in, uh, on XDCAM Air for ENG contribution, with our product of XDCAM Air, we have the ability to provide remote support and camera control directly from the camera head on many of our popular camera models, directly back to the station. And the great thing about this entire workflow that we'll talk about is that we have the product's experience and workflow understanding to help move your operations to the next generation of broadcast station. Remote operations, or REMI as we like to call it, leverages the power of SMPTE 2110, multi-distribution uh, streams, web-based production editing and control, control room automation, all the way through distribution channels that are both on and off premise. And we can do this at a part where any of these can individually be put together, or we can do the entire workflow for you start to end and maximize the power of what we can offer you for solutions. So again, we have XDCAM Air for contribution, and XDCAM Air has the capability of delivering live streams or file-based workflows to any of the next items, which are content to RC, our media uh, uh, collaboration platform. Or it can deliver content to Hive for production. Hive is our production system. It allows for editing and uh, many other uh, solutions. Or it can provide a linear uh, baseband feed to our XVS switcher, our award-winning switcher product line. Once we have our content here, we can continue down the path to media back on Hive, where the content that we have been receiving from our cameras can be edited and packaged and then either delivered again, back to a production control room for a linear style broadcast, or it can be delivered immediately to social media platforms. And why is that important? Because now more than ever, we need to be able to deliver content to the, our customers without a traditional linear broadcast day. So with Hive, we can immediately deliver to Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and engage our customers, your customers, with the content that your people are out there already shooting. Our, con our live production can go through our automated production system of ELC, which is our live control room automation software. And then once we have our production done, we can deliver it again through over the top or news wheel uh, variations for virtualized master controls using our Crispin Technologies, Crispin Master Control, a Sony company, or through conventional master control distribution like we're used to at this point. Okay? We're gonna talk a little bit about each of these very quickly, but it's important to note that no matter which box we're looking at here, Sony has a solution to future-proof you. So whether or not it's our live feeds from XVS switchers, our XVS switchers have Remy support and SMPTE 2110 capability built in today. So any of these boxes can be picked and choose to develop a workflow that works for you while protecting you in the future to make sure that this continues for many years to come. On our XDCAM Air Cloud service, these are our popular ENG cameras that have both cellular and Wi-Fi, dual link and QoS distribution delivery, multi-platform delivery or multi-distribution uh, service built into the camera. And what XDCAM Air allows us to do is send a QoS stream back to multiple point distributions, as I mentioned. So with this camera, we can distribute a live signal both to a regional broadcast center as well as individual local stations. That's going to be a theme that we're going to see through the next few slides. Our next product we spoke about was Hive. Hive allows us to archive and retrieve content management software, production editing, and all of the things you see there, but most importantly, connect. We need to develop products and solutions together that allow you to connect with your customers, and that's what our products are poised to do. Another thing with Hive we see is that we again have the capability to have a Hive platform at a regional broadcast center, but at the same time we can also have people at station A or station B or different locations, be it another television station, a truck, a remote truck, or even somebody sitting on a laptop at Panera. Have, they have the ability to browse the content that's within the system, be able to edit it, prepare it, and deliver it again to social media platforms or to on-air playback as part of a production control system. There's some new things we're showing it here at NAB, and including the ability to capture live stream uh, content over IP and file-based workflows, 
and through our powerful HTML5 editing that allows for not only simple editing but transitions, it's 16 channel audio support and, and many other items. And again, all of this is on display right now. These are solutions that are available and you can show see all of these on our entire intelligent media service wall along that side of the set uh, of our uh, booth right now. Another solution we have is of course our conventional broadcast production. Right now we can take our Sony cameras, we can feed monitors and we can do it to a conventional newscast with ELC. We've got our on the scene reporters that are coming back over XD Cam Air or microwave satellite or any other method and they're all working together and ELC can control the entire control room as a conventional master control. The power of our future technologies here is that we also will be able to offer you a regionalized automation production control, where perhaps you have multiple different stations that are feeding back their cameras, monitors, microphones, and uh, IFB back and forth bi-directional over SMPTE 2110 and, and uh, using embedded technologies. The streams of satellite, uh, microwave, or XD camera all feed back to that regional broadcast center. And now from one regional broadcast center, we have the capability to produce content and then deliver it back to the local stations. So what I'm really showing here is the fact that even though we have a broadcast regional broadcast center in Dallas, they could produce news today for Houston, Austin, and El Paso. The key is what is, the, what is the power of doing that? Well, there are some benefits to looking at this type of technology. Flexible breaking news coverage. With flexible breaking news coverage, we can produce news for any market when we have people in-house who are working on other broadcasting already. So we no longer have gaps in our time of slot for the day. Increased operational efficiency. With our directors, they can be producing more content. So when I was working in the news business many years ago, I had to do a five, six, and 11 o'clock news. But now we can have those same people that are doing news be doing news for other time zones. So they can do more newscasts, which makes them even sharper, and it gives us a higher production level quality in every market. There's no reason that any market on our television has to look any different than any other one within our station group. It's all about that collaboration. Less on-premise hardware. That means that instead of buying perhaps four graphics engines for every single station within a broadcast group, we know that even though, if we were to say, let's say I have 10 television stations within a broadcast group, four channels of graphics per station, we're talking about 40 graphics engines. But if we were to utilize this type of technology and we know that maybe only 20, 25 of the units are actually in use at any given time, now we have better utilization of our hardware as well. Because they're not all being used at the same time, we can use resource share a lot of these tools. Reduced capex costs, I'm not buying as many graphics channels, I'm not buying as many playback servers because we can do location editing, location uh, uh, contribution from cameras, location graphics. Better staff utilization, we mentioned that. There's less people having to maintain the equipment at the edge because we have the majority of the core equipment at a regionalized broadcast center. And it also provides disaster contingency. I can have multiple resource, uh, multiple regional broadcast centers and any of them can provide broadcast back to any of the locations, which allows me to have some disaster contingency should there be a reason we need to get out of a building or switch buildings or being able to do it. It truly provides a hub and spoke environment, if you will, the next generation of production control room. So now that we have all this content from XD Cam Air, Hive, and production control rooms, how do we uh, use it to connect with our customers? To talk just a little bit about that, I'm gonna invite Joe Walker, who's the Director of Technical Service from Crispin, and he can tell you how we can distribute this content. Joe? All right, thank you, Jason. So this year, we're very excited to bring you our uh, most flexible solutions to date, all for your master control needs. Whether they be deployed as traditional on-prem, virtualized, or cloud-based solutions, we know we have a solution for you. We see the broadcast industry rapidly evolving, and we want you to know that we have solutions for you. Now, last year we introduced a web-based version of our proven playback client. This has played an important role in flexible deployments, especially for that virtualized or cloud-based solution such as the DR system that we showed you last year. This year, we're introducing a product family known as Core. This will include that web RPX, as well as several other upcoming web-based versions of Christmas traditional product suite all of these accessible from a central landing page. 
Now, when an operator uses Crispin's core, they'll no longer be tied to dedicated workstations for specific tasks. Instead, they can log into any workstation and access any of the applications that they have permissions for. Now, continuing with our operational focus, or central operations, we're also introducing our new central ops view. Central ops will allow a user to view up to four of their various user interfaces at once, with multiple options for how they're displayed. Now, when an, an application is included in this view, it's going to intelligently compact its view to only show what's critical for a user to monitor. Central Ops is essentially tearing down the various operational silos that exist today in a master control room. A single operator can now simply monitor their honor playlists while also ingesting and prepping new content, all from the same screen. Now, building upon our acquisition, prep, and distribution foundation, we've also enhanced our content management options for our MMDC and loading dock solutions. With our new find and retrieve workflow known as Farlink, We've extended Loading Dock's industry-leading file-based acquisition and distribution system um, and opening up new opportunities for content sharing and monitoring. Now, Farlink is typically driven by a customer's playback schedule. It will target missing content from that schedule and retrieve it from any file location available to it. Some examples of this could be one or more sister stations in a group or a central SAN, the local stations managing with such something such as NavX. Users are no longer limited to local clip inventory but now have access to any monitored location. Loading Dock with Farlink also plays a vital role in a Cloud Master Control solution, whether that be for disaster contingency or as your main playback system. In this workflow, Farlink doesn't just copy content from one location to another. It can utilize our Loading Dock to upload clips to C, where they can be transcoded in the cloud if need be, and from there, the clips are imported into the cloud-based video server for playback. If the server API supports it, Farlink can even import the content into the server just like it would for traditional on-prem broadcast video servers. This solution can also be utilized for other simple station workflows, such as importing content into your playback video server from one or more watch folders. This can be another simple way that a NavX or a Hive user might transfer content into master control for playback. Now, Farlink operation and monitoring can all be accessed via that same Crispin core and central ops. Now, in this past year, we've seen a continued in increase in interest for Newswheel channels. And we don't see any indication that that's going to change in the coming year. We think there's many reasons for that. Uh, people are finding it harder to make linear broadcast schedules fit their needs. I don't know about you, but I'm often not home for the 6 p.m. news. Instead, we rely upon on-demand types of solutions where we get what we want when we want it. Now, a 24-hour news channel is a great way to extend your newscast to multiple screens to provide this sort of thing. A news wheel also fits today's we brought it to your first mindset. When viewers can depend on you anytime they want an update, they'll continue to go to you first. It's also an efficient way to maximize news production efforts. It doesn't require a full production team, and it also allows for the reuse of news content from live newscasts. Now, the concept of a news wheel is not new. However, combining both the news rundown and a traffic schedule is. Crispin's news wheel combines traffic and news schedules into a single user interface for master control operations. It's also, it's, it also has a MOS interface that's fully compatible with major news systems, such as ENPS, iNews, and more. Our fully automated interface enhances your customer's 24-hour news channel operation for both OTA and OTT platforms. With the news wheel, our customers are able to maximize their available news content, reaching viewers outside of their traditional OTA viewing area. Now, finally, this year we're introducing our OTT Link. OTT Link provides functionality for downstream OTT systems and allows broadcasters to maximize monetization of content uh, for playback on multiple screens through dynamic ad insertion. A simple example of that would be this house graphic that we have up here. Picture these multiple people that are watching all the same program. However, when it's time to air a commercial, through the power of dynamic ad insertion, they actually end up with a specific commercial tailored towards their needs. That's the power of ad insertion. But OTT Link is more than just ad insertion. It also provides regional and subscription-based um, blackout requirements for cable and satellite providers. All of this is done with no additional user involvement. Now, to learn more about any of these topics that Jason and I have talked about today, please make sure to visit us in the Intelligent Media Services uh, exhibit to our left. Thank you, everybody.